Good morning. I decided to do a, another warm up. I haven't done one in a while. Um, trying a slightly different format with the drawing camera, or the desktop camera, whatever you call it, the document camera. That's what I want to say. So I was thinking of just hashing out my plan for the week. So I'm working on Intertwingler still. And that is the web engine, basically, uh, that I was working on at uh, Summer Protocols. And then I decided to pivot to uh, use a very overused phrase. And uh, the idea behind it, or rather the sort of the idea behind the pivot, um, was to take a, a lot more of an aggressive stance toward the project and um, I think it was the right idea. Um, it just ended up being a, a bunch more work. So I ended up doing an ontology and I ended up doing a second ontology or rather updating an ontology. And then I decided just basically last week to do a parameter registry And um, the idea behind the parameter registry is not exclusively, but when you have a query string, you know, you've got A equals B and then ampersand C equals D, whatever. You want to be able to effectively round trip this and the reason for that is uh, because um, the it's actually turns out to be very useful to be able to guarantee the exact lexical representation of a URL and furthermore like there's stuff downstream of these systems that consume you know, the, com the parameters composed together to make composite objects, like dates, for example, would be off the top of my head, or sets or ranges, uh, also very common. Uh, there's things that are coded properties, so there's things that only have like certain valid values, so like they belong to a certain set of, of uh, sort of a universe. So getting that information, there's like syntaxes, there's like numbers get zero padded and whatever. There's all sorts of crap, so anyway. I wrote a thing to deal with this, like it'll turn this into a hash, it'll manage the cardinality. That's another one too, it's like if you have multiple values, like do you take the latest value off the end of the string or you, do you take the first one that you see? So just stuff like that, like what is the cardinality? How many things should there be? Should it be in an array or should it be a scalar, uh, et cetera. So like there's all these sort of ambiguities that can all get kind of arranged uh, automatically in a set uh, or in a, a, a sort of a configuration. But more to the point, the actual uh, parameter name are, it has, I have found it to be useful to be able to make like an org-wide org registry of just like the names, what the valid ranges of values are, and then coercion functions in and out of them, and then again like the round trip function capability, whatever you want to call it. So that's, uh, and I wrote one of these things like 10 years ago and it took me years to get around to writing it because it's like, oh, like I didn't think it was important enough or it's like, oh, like <laughs> query parameters, who gives a shit, right? Um, so the idea was, you know, well, it was just finally do it, let's do it. And, and, and I did it, so I did it in Perl 10 years ago and, um, you know, it was useful. And of course, I'm not writing intertwingler in Perl. I'm writing it in Ruby, and there's reasons for that. And I was like humming and hawing for months and months about porting the parameter registry from Perl to Ruby. And then uh, this last week, I was just like, screw it, let's just freaking do it because it's going to make life easier. Because so intertwingler has a bunch of functions that, uh, or sorry, it's sort of separated into content handlers
and it transforms. And content handlers originate, or they originate is a sort of a weasel word, but they they're, they're, they generate, they procure content. And transforms take content, they take a response body, uh, or, or a request body for that matter, they take the, the content and then they transform it. And so I have found that just decoupling all of the functionality into these two species of things like basically makes both of them. It's like, you know, if you were thinking about like, you know, a vector space, it's like if you were writing an app that integrated these two things, you would have to have an area. But when you split them apart, you only have to have two vectors. Does that make sense? So that's kind of, it's like you just have to do so much less code because these transforms are teeny and these content handlers are teeny, but you put them together and, uh, and you get something a lot more, you, <laughs> I was going to say, you, you leverage the synergy of it. So the thing about the transforms is that you handle those with path parameters. So I don't know if you see like slash foo, whatever, and then you see a semicolon, and then you'll see like func, and then equals p1, p2, those are commas, p3, whatever. And the cool thing about this re representation is that you can tack on another semicolon, and then you could have func2. And you can just keep going. And so the idea is, is this representation says that take the resource slash foo, apply func to it with these parameters, and then apply func2 to it, and then apply func n to it. And you've got this one-to-one -one relationship between the URI and the, the, the representation. And therefore, you don't have to screw around with, like, what do we call these things? Uh, and if you want to add a function, you can just add another transform. And the transforms, transforms are a form of handler. So like you've got like just the er handler. And then you got its sort of genealogy. And then the actual engine itself. Itself is, is, is another sort of subclass of handlers. And that way, in Intertwingler, these are very, very, very well-defined targets. And so two weeks ago, I was working on the ontologies to describe the configuration of these handlers and transforms. Now I'm just finishing up this parameter registry so that I can ensure the continuity of the URIs and whatnot. If I hadn't mentioned this, and I've mentioned this in a million other places, the whole point of making Intertwingler is to be able to address very, very large numbers of very, very small objects on the web. And in order to do that, you need to be able to make sure that the URLs don't break. And so we have a enormously, ridiculously stringent regime of ensuring the continuity of URLs. And that means we need to control everything. And so the way that we do that in part is like putting this freaking iron claw on the uh, on things like query parameters and also using derived uh, addressing for things like functions. I will go into more detail about it in the not too distant future, but I'm going to get back to work now. But first, I'm going to finish my coffee.